Hi, my name is Dina Higley, and I'm the author of a book called Mama Holic: Crazy Confessions of a Helicopter Parent. This is what it looks like, and uh, it's a very funny book, and it's a story of my crash and burn um, from being a helicopter parent to being a balanced, healthy, peaceful parent, and um, it's a fun read. I have four kids. Uh, my son Connor's 24 and he was diagnosed high-functioning autistic at the age of four and he's now at university. He goes to the um, to Azusa Pacific University. He's doing great. When he was really little we were very much advocates and we're still autism advocates to this day. Um, my next child is 22. She's um, uh, our, also our biological child and then we adopted two children, one from Ethiopia, his name is Helio, and he's now 18. And our youngest, 16, is uh, Adele, and we adopted her from Vietnam. And she was born with no right leg below the knee. I just uh, came from a doctor's appointment with her, actually. And her fingers were fused together. So she's gone through a series of operations. So between my son with autism and speech therapy and all of that, and all the doctor's appointments with the physical problems of my daughter, and then just the two middle ones who are just as much trouble, actually. <laughs> um, I had my hands full. I, whether I was a good mom or not was based solely on my kids' performances. And so if they were going to perform well, well, they had to get an A in their science project. Now, if they're going to get an A in their science project, obviously I have to do it for them or they're not going to get an A. And slowly it starts to creep where you start doing more and more things for them because you want the outcome to be so positive. Mm. And the reality is that you're taking away more and more of their own personal growth and their own personal sense of self and their own respect because they have no respect for themselves because they're not accomplishing anything. Mm. And I saw that happen you know, over and over and over again. And also this thing about after school activities is out of control. You know, I look around at moms in car line and they're all asleep because that's their only break they get in the day between, you know, what, if they're working moms especially, picking up their kids and taking them to a myriad of after school activities. Then they come home, everybody does homework. You have to get straight A's to get into college nowadays and it's, it's too much. So basically what happened to me is I started to resent being a taxi driver. And, um, and I wasn't a pleasant person to be around. I would do all the things that they asked of me. I would be their personal assistant. I would run their errands. I, would, I never said no, but all of that lack of boundaries between myself and my child started making me resentful. And, you know, I, I, lashing out at them. I, I, I make you a hot breakfast every morning and you don't say thank you and you're out the door and you don't need half of it. And, you know, and it just got sort of spiraled out of control and I saw this happening with other women too. So I started comparing the way I had been raised to the way I was seeing all the kids being raised now. How entitled they were. How they expected their parents to be their personal assistants. If they left something at home, you know, to pick up the phone and have it there Johnny on the spot. And, you know, my joke is that my, my record for round trips to high school one day was 12. Now that's, Whoa. <laughs> I would actually stop a meeting and go and take my daughter six blocks in the rain so she wouldn't get wet. I mean, I, and I started realizing after, the, after she got married and had the baby that I, and, and I had flipped out and ended up in the, hot, in the ER room, um, that I needed to really evaluate. This really wasn't about her and her misbehaving. This was about me and my junk. And it set me on this whole path of, self-exploration and a spiritual journey, a psychological journey, and it was so freeing to finally be able to figure out what I needed to do with my kids, which was set boundaries and, and, and have a goal of raising them as healthy, healthy well-adjusted adults, and to, to advocate for moms. We weren't doing ourselves any good. I, I wasn't seeing happy moms everywhere, and so I've become this advocate for moms to take care of yourselves, and to and then everybody's happy. If mom's happy, everybody's happy. If mom's peaceful, the household's peaceful, 
And so that's sort of how the book came about. You know, kids are made to be resilient and tough and strong, and they're, uh, they should be able to handle the cold and the heat, and they don't need a drink of water every five seconds. And I just started making a bunch of little rules that grew into a lifestyle that we adopted in our family, and it's worked beautifully. From 13 on, um, you know, start letting them make mistakes. Because if they make mistakes at that age, there's, the repercussions are small. If they make a, mis a huge monumental mistake at the age of 21 or 22, they lose a job, or they lose a wife, or they lose their family. So I think, it's, I think we're doing the reverse. I think we're not attaching enough when they're little, and then we're hovering when they're old. And I think if we reverse that process, then we would have much healthier grown kids. Well, okay. Once again, I'm going to draw a parallel to being an infant. You, you instinctively know when it's time to pull that pacifier, but it's easier not to because it comforts them and it, it makes your life a little bit easier. But you know there's a small window when you can do it. There's a small window when you can take that bottle away. As teenagers, th there are these windows of opportunity where you see maturity kick in and you can either pull back and let them explore it or you can bulldoze through it and then they've given up on that whole well I'm not going to make wise decisions because mom's just going to veto them anyway. But there are certain things that you do have to decide once they, here in Southern California especially, once they get their driver's license and you slowly, slowly loosen the leash so that by the time they're in college they've made so many choices that they make wise ones when they're gone and there's nothing that you can do about it anyway. I'm a firm believer in at a certain point you do not offer unsolicited advice but you hope that you've built such a strong emotional relationship with your child that they'll come to you with questions. If they come to me for advice then gently you know I'll offer it but I'm not going to bulldoze into their life you know as it was especially hard for me when my daughter had her baby and my psychologist said, if you see her putting that diaper on that baby's head, you do not correct her. You do not say anything. She's the mom, you're the grandma. If she asks you for advice, that's brilliant. Then you get to help her. But if she doesn't ask, stay out of her way. And I try to do that with all my kids. If I see them doing something maybe not the way I would do it, but it's not really literally a mistake, then I will let it go. I'll let it go and see how it plays out. I'm not God, I don't, you know, my way is, or the highway is not necessarily a way to be a, as a person, let alone a parent.